Welcome back to another What If Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Uh, another What If Inner Circle preview show. You'll notice again, I am by myself. Brandon here joining you from What If. Sean is absent again, doing great things in the world uh, with his other company, BevGraph, which we've mentioned a few times on this show. Um, they have a lot of really cool partnerships going on. Um, and just a quick summary on BevGraph. So it is a sustainable biodegradable packaging company at its essence. But what they're really out to do is disrupt the way we look at what we do in terms of our packaging and how that impacts the environment. And a moral story is they're saving the whales and the dolphins. So how could you not be behind that company? Um, so I joke a little bit, but really they're doing amazing things over there. Um, and really, really cool partnerships that are taking place. That's what the meeting is about right now that Sean's in. Um, can't tell you who it's with just yet until contracts are officially signed, but then we're going to bring you behind the scenes and show you exactly how those deals got done. Um, let's just say they're with very, very big sporting leagues in this country. Um, you definitely know, and have probably attended games at, so you can extrapolate from there exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but these are not small deals and we're going to tell you the ins, the outs, how this stuff gets done, how you can do this in your business. And it's a real life live example. And it's not just some theory from a 21 year old MBA grad who thinks they know how to grow your business. No, we're here to disrupt the way you think about your business. We're here to disrupt the way you think about the world and you see opportunities and possibilities because we are doing that in our businesses right now as we speak. So we're not bragging about that stuff. I am joining you from a very cold North Carolina office space here, and I'm excited to dive in. Got my hoodie on. Let's get all cozy and relax and dive right in. So let's recap where we've been the past few weeks and where are we going. So you've heard us talk about the Harmonious Business Architecture. Harmonious is an acronym. We'll get to that in a second. We disrupt the traditional disciplines of business. So what we believe is there are 10 fundamental disciplines in business. Every single business, no matter how big, how small, how new, how old, you need to master these 10 disciplines. Without them, you will fail to some degree. You have to have these present in your business. You have to be measuring them. You have to be aware of them. And like we say, we, you have to master them in order to grow and scale effectively or else you're just going to pull your hair out along the way. So these are what they're traditionally called. Things like strategic planning, project management, metrics and reporting, leadership. Those are boring names. We're not a boring company. But let's look at what these look like. So when we map them out, they look like these this, this circle on the outside. And what we have here and what we've established at What If is it's not so much just knowing about them and measuring them and being aware that they exist and having these different silos, the way this map looks without the lines is that you have these 10 different departments. And that's what typically happens in business. You have siloed departments who don't talk to each other or sometimes hate each other and can't stand working together. Think about, I think the, the best example of this would be The Office, the TV show. Um, I went to college in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which is where The Office was based. So I, I might be a little biased, but Tell me that's not one of the funniest TV shows ever. Well, think about Michael and Toby. They couldn't stand each other. Michael, as the leader, hated HR. That's what Toby's role was. And if you think about this, it's that's really what happens in day-to-day -day business, whether it's at the Fortune 500 level or the, the small mom and pop on Main Street. You have this this constant fight and battle between different departments. Leadership can't stand HR. Finance can't stand sales. Sales can't stand marketing. And we're fighting with ourselves. So we're never really moving the same direction as a company. Now, the bigger the company, the more you can hide this dissonance between the different departments. It The, the machine makes up for what it lacks. But on a smaller scale, as entrepreneurs and small business owners, the more these departments and disciplines are broken the more they show up. If your sales and marketing department isn't humming along at full speed in a small business, well, that starts to show up really quickly. You all of a sudden can't make payroll this month or 
uh, you're having trouble paying your vendors, you're calling the electric company to hope they won't turn the lights off on you this month. These things start to show up really, really quickly. And often we don't look in the right places to understand why it's happening or how. So that's what we've put down on this chart here is you have these 10 silos traditionally, but the disruption here is how we look at them. And it says on the screen, the leverage is hidden in the links, how they all connect to each other is really what needs to be focused on. Now you could look at the screen and see the missing piece right there. The secret is in front of you. It's how they connect, where they connect and how deeply they connect to each other. So what we've done is we've said, these names are boring. We don't like them at all. We love to have fun at what if. If you're not having fun in your business, why are you in your business? Stop that. So we have fun and we've renamed them all of these cool things. So strategic planning is now navigate, project management, operate, process and automation is order, leadership is inspire. What we've really done, even though they're fun names, is we've boiled it down to the essence of the discipline. That is what we do. And that is the other part of the magic that we do at What If. Anytime there's a situation, whether it's a problem, an opportunity, a challenge, whatever it is, we always boil it down to the essence. What that means is in strategic planning, for example, what is the essence of that? Why are we why are we doing strategic planning as business owners? Well, when you boil it down and you ask enough questions, the essence of strategic planning is so you can navigate your way through the day-to-day -day world in your business and to the future. You are navigating your way from where you are to where you want to be. So that's why we have things in strategic planning navigate, such as your core values as a business, your mission, your vision. We've been talking about that for a while now. That's that's what starts to come up. So when you boil it down to the essence, what we have on the screen here is what is the essence of the traditional disciplines. And the importance here is understanding how you leverage those disciplines and how you boil everything down in your company so it all integrates and flows well together. And that is when you can start to build this well-oiled machine that we all like to think of our businesses as was when you understand these disciplines. So this is what it looks like in terms of the harmonious architecture um, spelled out in the correct order. There is no correct order here. It's really what your business is lacking at the current moment. That is where we can focus and, and tweak all the other levers within your business to really optimize where you're at right now. So where we're at, let's go back a slide here. We've been taking these just from top to bottom of the, tr the traditional disciplines. So we've been in Navigate. We were there last month for a while. Last week, we hit on Operate. And this week, we're going to touch on a little bit more on Operate and a little bit more on Serenity. So Serenity, let's just look at the essence of that word. Time management is the traditional discipline. What a terrible theory. Can you manage time? No, nobody can manage time. You can choose what you do with it, but you can never manage time. It can't be created. It can't be destroyed. It's happening in the present moment. So what is that really? It's it's serenity. It's how are you spending your time, both you, your employees, your company? How are you making sure you're maximizing your time, not necessarily from a productivity standpoint, but from you as the leader, what are you doing to make sure that your calendar isn't completely stressing you out? What are you making sure the same isn't happening to your employees? So we're gonna go through that a little bit um, and I wanna break down some things here. We're gonna dive super deep on that in the inner circle. And we're gonna actually touch on last week where we talked about operate or execution. Um, and we'll break down, what's your, what's your five-year vision? How do we get that to uh, the one-year goals? We're coming up on a new year here. And then from there, how do we break that down by individual role and department within your company to say, okay, here are our action steps, our leading indicators, what we need to do every single day. And that's how you start to fill up your calendar. So let's back up. Let's pause here for just a minute. Like I said, we're going to talk about a little bit on serenity and a little bit more about operate today. Um, I had the opportunity this week to sit through two different um, masterminds, if you will. One of them happened to talk about vision, which we've discussed now a few weeks ago, and we've been talking about a little bit within the inner circle. So we were talking about vision statements in the inner circle last week. We were crafting a vision statement, and 
we had our our participants, our clients in the inner circle do a really, really phenomenal job. We have, we're reviewing the final ones today. That's where we're going to kick off before we schedule down into your leading indicators. And they were great. They were inspiring. Their teams could get behind them. They were metric specific. They were also that, oh shit, scary. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do this quite yet vision, which is exactly what you want to look for. If you know how to do it, it's too small. Um, it, so we want to make it big enough to where it's something that we actually have to chase in the future and inspiring vision for the future. Well, on these calls that I was a part of, I had, I, I, like I said, I had the opportunity to sit in on them. One was really, really good. They really understood the importance of a vision for a company. And they, they went through a similar exercise with their group of why we need to establish that first before we get started and how we actually chase it and get there. On the other hand, it was absolutely terrible, the exercise that that they went through in order to discuss the, the mission of the company. Um, and I don't, I don't remember the exact language. It wasn't vivid vision, but it was something along those lines about crafting a vision statement. And I was blown away by what they were telling their people to do. So which is a perfect opportunity for me to pause real quick and say, that's why the inner circle exists. We have always done fractional engagements as at what if, and we said, no, there is so much bad information out there and so many entrepreneurs and business owners being lied to, stolen from, taken advantage of in these other groups. And we have to put an end to it. We have to, we have to let the world know about this architecture and this way of running your business because the big online gurus are stealing your money straight up. That's how I feel about it. I know that to be true because I've been in the other groups. And like I said, the perfect example came up this week. So these vision statements that were being crafted, there was, there was two common themes. One was, why do we even need a vision? This sounds kind of stupid. I didn't say anything. So we're just going to, we'll get past that one and say, that's not on the table for discussion today. Cause go back and watch the other inner circle preview calls. We've talked about that for the past few weeks, but the other one was your vision statement should describe this beautiful, perfect future um, that, that you would dream of at this point in your life. And while I think that's, it's a good exercise to go through probably for you personally, um, and I've done those before, you know, the describe your perfect day exercise, all these other things. I've seen them in, in the Tony Robbins room. I think that's valuable exercise. So you can kind of dream and play in your own personal future and maybe do that with your spouse. But in terms of business, I think that's way off the mark. And that is definitely not what we teach here at What If in terms of crafting your vision. And we'll get into why in just a few minutes. But they were going through and people were reading off their vision statements and they were being applauded for this stuff. And it was paragraphs upon paragraphs. One dude read one. I It was probably like a full page on a Word document. And my first thought was, if you gave that to any one of your team members, how would they first of all remember it? And second of all, how would they break that down and understand what that means for them? Because you're just crafting what your perfect day looks like, which doesn't include them at all on this paper. And also, it's all about you. So not that I'm saying your company should describe this perfect future vision. Um, that's not at all what we're talking about. But that's what was being preached in this, in this group. So let me just clear that up real quick. We are not talking about crafting the perfect day that doesn't include your company, doesn't include your team. We are crafting vision statements for your company and breaking those down. Um, so that was just something that really disturbed me. And I've seen this in a number of other groups. So if you're in one of these groups and, and those are the exercises that are being done, just understand that they're really just taking your money and they, they don't want to help you at all. Um, it's it's tough to say, again, because I've I've been in those other groups and I've I've seen this happen. And at the time I thought... This is, this is great. I'm making progress in my business. Well, at the end of the day, you're not. Because if you can't bring your team on board with you and instill the vision into them, 
then they're never going to chase it with you. And you're just going to cycle through employees over and over and over. And that's why we start there and we spend so much time there to get these things right so that they can be conveyed to the rest of your team. So let's dive into um, a little bit more on operate and, and how we boil this down to create um, your schedule. And we touch a little bit on serenity. Like I said, that's what we're going to be diving into on the inner circle this week. Um, before I do that, I just want to put this up on the screen. If you'd like to learn more about the inner circle, go to whatif.com slash inner circle. Or if you just go to whatif.com, you'll be able to take our bad assessment, which will show you the areas of your business that need the most help right now. And then you know exactly what to address and how to fix them. It all ties in with the harmonious architecture. So we break those 10 pieces down. We put them on that PDF. It'll take you eight minutes, whatif.com, and we'll send you that report. Or jump on over to whatif.com slash inner circle. You could join us in the room and we'll actually flesh out the real problems that are happening in your business right now. So let's break down a vision. Let's take a um, just a, a random example here of what a vision statement could be and boil this down step by step to show you how you can get to not only the, the serenity on your personal calendar, but how you can convey this in little bite-sized chunks to your team, your employees, even the other companies and partnerships you have with your company so that everybody's moving in the same direction. So let's just take random numbers here. I'm going to write them down on my little remarkable here, and I can show you step-by-step step along the way. But what we're going to do is take a five-year vision, and this is all super vague, but do this with your vision do this at the same time. If you're watching this live, try to join, try to jot down at the same time. If you're watching the replay, pause, come back, and then pause it and write down your actual vision. And if you don't have that, again, jump into the inner circle. We can help you craft that vision for your company so it's actually effective. So let's just say our five-year vision, we want to be at, I'm just going to use again, round numbers, and this is not how we teach it, but I'm doing a super quick example. Apologize for my chicken scratch. Five-year vision is to be a hundred million dollar company. Um, let's say your current revenue is ten million dollars a year. So, current is ten million. So that would be basically a ten x growth in five years. Now, whether that's achievable or not to you, for this example, we're going to assume that is a massive lift that scares you to think about. That's what we want to see in your vision. So what do we do? We're at 10 million. We want to get to 100 million in five years. We don't know how to get there. Let's break this down at the most simple level. And what I'm ignoring here is exponential growth. So standard growth is going to look like this. That's perfectly linear in a straight line. Exponential growth, which is more accurate, looks more like this one over here. So I'm, we're going to assume standard growth for this example, but just understand that your vision and the way you break things down should probably be more along the lines of exponential growth, meaning that this year you might go from 10 million to 12 million, next year from 12 to 20, then from 20 to 40, 40 to 90 and 90 to 100, something like that, where it's, it's a slow growth in the beginning, but then it picks up really quickly at the end. This one is just a simple example where we can you're going to grow by the same dollar amount every single year for five years. And it could be almost predictable. Um, nothing in life is predictable, but if it, we at least start there, we have a starting point and we can adjust this as we see fit. So if we want to grow from uh, 10 million to a hundred million, that is a difference of $90 million. So I'm going to take out my calculator because I'm not super good at math on the spot. But if we have 90 million divided by five years, that's a growth of $18 million per year. So that means by the, their goal for this year, so we'll say for 2024, our goal is going to be total revenue of 10 plus 18, which is $28 million. So that's our 2024 goal. Again, forgive the chicken scratch, but that's how I roll. So from here, what we can do is we can break down by department what needs to happen for each department, each of the 10 disciplines to get to the $28 million. 
So if we understand, um, you'd have to look at, this is where you're going to have to dial dial into your exact metrics and hopefully you have those, but let's look at your, um, your ubiquity discipline, which is for us, that's what we call marketing and sales. So we're going to need to see what are, what our current lead flow is, what our current conversion metrics are, all of that kind of stuff. And we're going to need to multiply it by 2.8 from 10 to 28 million is a growth of 2.8 X. So we're going to be able to chart those out and say, okay, if our current lead flow is 100 leads per day, we're going to need to multiply that by 2.8 which means we need 280 leads per day. So you can see how this kind of boils out step by step and we can go discipline by discipline. We can go to your, your people discipline. What is, what does it look like for them now at $10 million a year? How many people are there? Do we need to multiply it by 2.8 or do we just need to optimize those people? There's so many different things that come into play. Um, when, when breaking this vision down into the five year, um, into the ultimate five year vision and goal, breaking it down to the one year and the current goals, but we can break this down step by step. So we're going to go five years. Ideally, you'd want a three year benchmark, a one year benchmark. Then we're going to have quarterly goals and we break things down. We use the 12 week year methodology, which essentially says that every 12 weeks we're, we're creating it as a year. So we have the opportunity to break these five-year goals down into quarter, what are quarterly goals almost. And then you have a week in between for review and setting the new goals for the next 12 weeks. So ideally what happens is you can get as much done in 12 weeks, if done right, that you can in one full year. And we have four of those throughout the course of one year. So hopefully your big five-year goal that you're scared to get to we might even be able to do that in five quarters. That would be super aggressive, but nothing says that's not possible using the harmonious business architecture. So we can go further. So this year we need to get a hundred leads per day. Um, and we can, we can break that down. What, what channels are we marketing on? What can we do? Can, can we put paid ads behind that? Could we try a different marketing channel? Could we try um, adding more salespeople, reducing salespeople, all these different things. And what we ultimately want to get to is breaking that down into daily action steps. Now, I was on um, this, this mastermind that, that I mentioned that I said was a really good example of vision, which I stand behind. Yes, absolutely. Um, but they had a picture on the screen during the presentation, and it was actually from a Grant Cardone conference. Regardless of how you feel about Grant Cardone, I, I, what I saw on the screen actually blew me away, and I was surprised. Um, and I, I took a picture of it here that I just want to... Um, I want to show you because this is this is what's present in the marketplace. This is what we're being told as entrepreneurs. These are the gurus that we're following. And it's it's tough to see here. I won't, I don't know if you can see it on my phone if you pause the video, but right under finance, um, it's looking at metrics and it's saying, what are your leading indicators, your leading metrics or leading indicators for different departments in your company? And they're telling you that revenue per employee is a leading metric. Revenue is never a leading metric. It would, you would have to really, really convince me um, why revenue for you is a leading metric of something else. But the fact that this, this guru is proclaiming that revenue per employee is a leading metric that your company needs to be aware of, to me, blew my mind. And especially knowing the amount of money people paid to be in that room to hear that was super concerning. So that's our whole goal here is to be able to break down these goals into little bite-sized chunks. And I need you to do it by, by role in your company. If you have a hundred thousand people, obviously this is going to take a long time. If you have 10 to 20 people, this will take a lot less time but it's vital to do because your employees are not thinking like this and they shouldn't be expected to. This is the job of leadership and that's why we go so in depth on this, but you need to be breaking down your, your goals into leading indicators. If you can do that, that's how you can give that to any employee and that's their scorecard. And they say, I have to do these three things every single day and the degree to which I do them 
will determine the success I have in this role. And that's their scorecard of how to get promoted, how to get raises, all these other things. It's so simple. It's not easy because we have to actually go through and do it. And that's what we're going to dive in and do here in just a few minutes on the inner circle. We have um, we have the folks who joined us last week who are super excited about to have this week create this plan for their employees. So what we have is what we're going to do is take their 2024, um, the, the vision statement that's really going to expire at the end of 2028 at this point. We're going to break that down. What does that look like for 2024? And then we're going to break it down further into this 12 week year. And we're going to say, okay, what does every single role in your company need to be accountable for on a daily or at the most weekly basis so that we can ensure your company hits these goals with 100% confidence. That is absolutely possible to do. What I would say is in the beginning, and this is why it's more of an exponential curve. If this is the first time you're doing this sort of a, a goal setting method um, and a leading indicator and planning your leading indicator metrics, it may take one or two quarters to figure this out and really dial in how you're breaking these things down. But that's why it's exponential because as you keep doing it and you keep getting better by your third, fourth, 12th, 12 week year, you're going to have this so dialed in that that's where the exponential part comes in. You're going to start hitting your five year goals in two and three years. And you will be blown away by what you can do in five years, let alone a decade. Um, even one year, you can get so much further along if you break this down correctly. So I have this back on the screen here, whatif.com slash inner circle. If you'd like to take the bad, it's just whatif.com. Like I said, that's a free report. It's going to take you eight to 10 minutes at most. We'll review it with you and tell you exactly where your company needs to go. We'll be back next week on the Inner Circle Preview Show. We're going to talk more about, I realized we didn't get to how to actually schedule this stuff on your calendar um, and break down these tasks, the leading indicators into daily action steps that you know to do on your calendar. I'm looking at my calendar over here and I have all this stuff planned out. So we're going to show you that. We're going to show you exactly how to plan this out, what your calendar should look like to set you up for success, what it would look like if you're absolutely out of your mind crazy and you're running all over the place and we see that all too often so i'd love for you to join us next week wherever you're watching this we'll be back for the inner circle preview show and come on over to the inner circle what if.com slash inner circle we'll see you on the inside and help you start running your business effortlessly